Welcome back to my channel, Classic Volkswagen Lovers. This is Junior with Classic VW Books and Sonny the Super Beetle. Uh, today I want to share with you a couple of things that I am running into. Um, and it's about the uh, uh, front uh, transmission mount for Sonny Super Beetle. And um, I have a couple of issues right now that I want to talk about. Uh, the first one is if you remember the video that I did about the three piece set that I purchased from JBug. I wasn't very happy with the fact that it's slightly different than the OEM and it does not provide any type of instructions whatsoever on how to install it, which is not very complicated with the exception that they don't disclaim that you will have to modify your front mount receiver in your car and you will have to remove the OEM bolts that come pressed in into the uh, receiver uh, part of the chassis. I will show you uh, what I'm talking about here in a minute. But this is what the uh, OEM looks like. And you can see it's got that um, oval shape in it, which is kind of like rubbery. It provides some kind of a cushion uh, for the transmission so that it wouldn't rattle in there or nothing like that when it's installed. So I was able to go online last night and I found this one at O'Reilly's Auto Part. Um, excellent customer service. I ordered this late, like sometime around, like around four, and it got delivered next day for free, pick up in store today. And it was very inexpensive. Um, so it's made in China. Yes, it's made in China. But uh, even with tax, I pay out of the store six dollars and 42 cents and free shipping uh, a big shout out to o'reilly's uh, this is the part number if you are ever interested in it it's a b2293 it's uh, from power torque transmission mount it's same size form and fit with the exception of this front part here it only has the inner oval part of the rubbery part here but not the one outside so uh, we're going to be using frankenstein over there to show you what i mean by the front transmission mount and how this actually uh, fits into it this is uh, frankenstein right here and we're going to be working down there just to show you what I mean by the front mount receiver and um, the issue I have with the one that it's supposed to be an upgraded uh, version from MP. I really don't want to do what I would have to do to make it work, which is modify the front end um, transmission mount uh, by grabbing a hammer, maybe applying some heat to those uh, pressed in bolts and hammering them out. So let me show you what I mean by that. So you're looking at Frankenstein's uh, front end uh, transmission receiver, and that's where the OEM transmission mount uh, installs to. Okay, let me show you how that goes. So this right here is the nose transmission uh, front end mount receiver so your support actually fastens here with two uh, nuts go right here so this is the OEM as you can see it has this rubbery portion which it's the exact same shape and form of that and it's a perfect fit that goes right there. It provides a better alignment for your transmission nose that goes through here and hooks up into your coupler for your uh, shift uh, rod. This one that it's made in China, um, it's a replica of that, with the exception that the outer portion of this, although it's the same size form and shape of this one here it does not have that rubbery part but it does have this little nose thingy here and uh, this actually installs here 
and it goes in very well. It's a tight fit. It's it's really good. The fit is perfect. No issues so far. So basically, the transmission will actually bolt onto this here. Uh, you'll put a nut here, a nut here, and your ground strap from your transmission goes here. So now that I have given you an idea um, as to what is the front mount receiver, I'm going to go under Sunny and show you the issue I'm having with the uh, three-piece rubber um, uretine kit that I purchased from JBOG, uh, which if I want to make a use of it, I will have to hammer these out. Um, I don't know, and I'm not sure that I want to do that. One, um, if I hammer this, I risk the chance that I might bend this receiver a little bit. Do I want to do that? I don't. Now, this one here, believe it or not, is still functional. It's, it's, it's something that I am impressed with, even though how H it is, it had withstand all of the uh, uh, weather and stuff like that. And other than a minor hair, fine hair crack here, I mean, it's pretty solid. It's pretty solid. So I'm pretty impressed with this one here. So what I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna go under Sunny and show you with the uh, camera the uh, problem that I have right now. So now I'm gonna go ahead and crawl under uh, Sunny. So as you can see, I am right under Sunny's uh, the Super Beetle. This is the front mount uh, receiver for the uh, transmission here, and. The problem that I have right now um, is that even though they said this is an aftermarket upgrade, you can still see that you don't have that other uh, alignment piece here, which has got the rubbery portion in the same shape, which helps for alignment and also absorbs any vibration. These here, right there, those are the two bolts that I was showing to you earlier when I was doing the demonstration in Frankenstein so this is the problem we have look so this piece here mounts to the front end of the transmission that's no problem that's fine the problem comes when if you want to if you want to use your OEM uh, fastening points which are these two bolts right here that one right there and this one right here you don't have enough uh, treads because of the thickness of this rubber piece here um, to actually bolt the nut that the kit came with so you're forced to actually get these out and use the bolts that they sent you in the hardware kit with the uh, three-piece uh, mount set okay so let's say that I went ahead and removed these here uh, and was able to actually use that hardware that they provided I still have another issue which is you see this here this is the ground strap from the transmission that connects into into the chassis the story here now is let's say that I went ahead and removed these bolts from my car and opted to use the two bolts that they sent me uh, to install through here. But the way that this here is shape, I, I can't get this piece to be, to go in there fine. Uh, or if I wanna make it work, I may have to bend this here in a manner that I would make like an L shape like that to fit in here. But the problem with that is that this material over time becomes brittle and if I do that, I also risk a chance that I will break this eye nut here. So technically I would have to connect it in the back over here, which then generates another problem because then this piece here won't be completely flat against this receiver here. I think that I'm just gonna go with the um, the one that I just bought today and maybe just save this one and whenever I go to a 
a meat and swap, you know, maybe sell it uh, for a couple of bucks and have somebody, you know, have a use for it. Somebody who's already removed theirs. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, get these out, these two nuts out, install um, my other one. Anyway, let me go ahead now and get out of here. I gotta get a couple of wrenches so that I can break these two no uh, nuts loose here. I'm gonna have to loosen up the other two big uh, nuts right here and uh, just slide the transmission out about maybe six or eight inches and uh, go ahead and uh, take this out, install the new one and then I will be ready to push it back in. And then also I will be ready to install my engine which I've been wanting to do that for the longest time and uh, then continue to finish my wiring, get the car mechanically sound and running so that I can then finish my interior. So uh, we're back under the car and uh, I wanted to show you my setup really quick. Uh, this is a motorcycle jack uh, that I have for Ruby. What I'm doing is I'm using uh, two pieces of uh, one foot by two inches. I've raised it to the point where it has touched the transmission to release the pressure of these bolts. So that I can go ahead and even though they are hand tight, but remember that this is uh, somehow it weights a few pounds. So, you know, it's going to put some uh, stress on that. So we need to get these out. And then once I get these out, I'm going to slide this jack back about maybe eight inches so I can go back, remove uh, those um, uh, two bolts that I show you in that other uh, front transmission mount and then replace it for the one I just purchased uh, last night. Um, uh, needless is to say, make sure you're always safe. Uh, keep, you know, all the safety precautions, especially if you're working by yourself. I also have two towers under the uh, the two uh, torsion bars, which I'm using as a safety measure. And also I have a jack here, just in case. It's better to be safe than to be sorry, okay? All right, folks, uh, let me show you um, now what I figure out. So. Uh, as you can see, I have the piece already mounted in the uh, front mount receiver. This is the uh, aftermarket upgraded version according to MP and JBUX uh, that I bought with my kit. And the only way that I was able to actually have this piece mount here and stay there and work was if I swapped the hardware um, just set it aside and just use the internal wash, the, the big washer in there and then put the OEM nut that goes to the car. But there's a problem. You can see right there that there is not enough um, threads from the bolt sticking out. Ideally, the standard would stay that you should have at least three threads sticking out or a quarter of an inch sticking out above the nut for that to be functional and provide you a safety. This here is not safe. So the options you have are to go ahead and press, like I said earlier, those bolts out if you, if you still want to use this piece here. Okay? All right. Okay, guys, so this is the... Uh, replacement mounts for the OEM one. Uh, it's just nugged in right now. Uh, next, I'm going to try to roll the transmission down to connect it right here. And then um, I'll put the ground strap uh, in front of the uh, support. The strap, this ground strap right here will actually uh, connect right here. It will the stud will stick through there. This will go there with a nut and we should have our transmission grounded. All right, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this over and couple it right here. Tie these nuts and we should be done here. I got my two torque wrenches already set to the right uh, foot pounds. I'm gonna be torquing uh, those M10s to 22 foot pounds and the uh, other two bolts, which are 
the radiator carrier bolts for the uh, transmission. I'm going to be uh, torquing those to 167 foot pounds. So I'm going to go ahead and crawl under the car and go ahead and uh, start torquing the ones in the uh, uh, front end of the transmission and then I'll move to the back. I'll put a little bit of grease in the uh, in the bolts, put them back on and then torque them to 167 foot pounds. Twenty two foot pounds. That's twenty two foot pounds right there. And then I'm going to torque these other two here. Um, that's a smaller socket. These are eighteen foot pounds. Oh, hold on. are M8 so let me set this to 18 foot pound okay that's good uh, we should be good there all right so now we need to go back uh, to the uh, carriage bolts in the uh, fork uh, put some grease in those and all right so that's what we got there Those are on, and then this is the ground strap. I tell you, brother, don't forget to put that ground strap. All right, put some grease on this uh, uh, transmission carrier bolt. And one thing I would recommend you do is make sure that when you're putting this in, try to tread it in with your fingers as far as you can. That's a good sign that the treads are not cross-threaded. You can even use your socket and just, you know, hand tie it like so. I want to make sure my cable, my clutch cable is not pinched. On two. And we're going to be torquing these to 167 foot pounds. So, I'm the one, and I'm going to do the same thing over here. So, the idea is to apply pressure in a uniform pattern. One, two, that's pretty loose right there. Okay, so, same thing on the other one. So, let's go ahead and do this. That's torque, same thing. That's torque. Okay. Okay, so what we have left is, um, The installation of the CV joint transaxles into the wheel hubs, and I should be done. It's late, I'm tired, <laughs> and uh, I finally got the transmission where I wanted it, and I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I gotta go ahead and run the, uh, the clutch cable 
through there. I bought a brand new I bought a brand new wing nut for that and I still have to attach that support back into the transmission. Okay guys, so um, that's it for now. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share my video with somebody. Until then, this is Junior with Classic BW Box and Sony the Super Beetle. And Sony the Super Beetle. Junior out. So today is the uh, day after I installed the transmission and um, next what you have to do is you can see that this right here is your uh, transmission nose and um, you can see that it's got that little dimple in there. This is your, uh, your shift coupler and then what you do is you bring it in until it is aligned with that dimple in there. Then you take this little guy here. See, it's got the little um, tip nose screw, and you screw it on. So I'm going to use a number eight um, wrench to tie this. I think that should be good. So after um, torquing that to where I need it, so as a safety measure, I'm going to be using a uh, safety lock wire. Uh, this is actually the safety lock wire used by the MR Combat Aircraft, and um, it's pretty uh, strong. It's made out of stainless steel. What I did, I cut a piece. Um, I would say that's about. Um, close to six inches so about a foot maybe I fold it in two pieces and I made this loop right here and next I'm going to stick it through here And there you have it. Nothing too fancy, not complicated. We just loop this uh, safety wire through the hole and around and that should stay in place. And we have some rain in Columbus, Ohio. Alright, so Another thing that I want to show you guys that I did I uh, yesterday I ran out of battery and um, um, I wanted to go ahead and install uh, these axles last night so that I would just you know be done with this and I went ahead and installed the uh, CV joints and I them to 25 foot pounds um, all over so here there 
and there. So that's what we have going right now for Sony the Super Beetle. I put the uh, clutch cable support into the transmission. I still have to tie that up. And the reason why I haven't done it is because I want to take that piece out and uh, just give it a, give it a little bit of a TLC, just polish it to you know to make it look nice, and perhaps maybe spray some clear uh, spray paint over it to uh, avoid any type of uh, rust you know in the future. Um, I did put a brand new wing nut right there. Uh, I also put new boot over there. I, I put a new seal uh, in the uh, fuel line for the PR right there in the uh, chassis. So that's a plus right there. Um, so that's what we got going. I have to buy a new fuel graded line. And I'm thinking about maybe uh, making a new uh, two a new metal two-piece for my gas line. So my next um, thing in my agenda is you can see that I have all of these wires hanging here. I'm going to go ahead and configure their connections. Um, this is a 1971. The bad thing about the books that we have from the past are that they are not color coded so we just have to figure the way to connect them. I know there's many on, online that you can go and uh, maybe look at them but they're not always very clear so um, I, I use my multimeter to actually measure continuity and that way I can determine which wire goes where. And then after I do that I'll go ahead and put the tar board that goes here on the sides like this one here. I still have to bend that sucker right there that actually punched me uh, in the arc. So I hope that uh, this, this video has uh, provided to you a guideline on how to maybe you know deal with a situation with your, uh, with your transmission uh, mounts. And uh, if you have an aftermarket kit like this one here, then you already know that if you did purchase that one, you're going to have to modify your front mount receiver in the bottom of your chassis. All right, so that's about it for right now. Again, I want to thank all of my new subscribers. Uh, thank you for the support. Um, I like to do this to share uh, the different uh, experiences and scenarios that we find when we're doing these uh, uh, restorations. Um, Everyone is different, but you know, one thing that I can learn from you or you can learn from me, it always works. Um, I like to watch some of my peers' uh, videos like Slate's VW Garage, The Busman 54, and you know, all these guys out there in the YouTube community that work with classic Volkswagens, we all bring something to the table. So I continue to always thank them and support them for what they do because as a community, it just keeps, uh, you know, make us growing and sharing with new generations to come the knowledge into a video that can be used for many years to come. Again, thank you. Uh, don't forget to like, give me a thumbs up, and uh, share my video with somebody. And don't forget to subscribe. Until then, this is Junior with uh, Sunny the Super Beetle. Junior out.